D-Star, DMR, and Fusion. Which one is best and which one is best for you? We're gonna have a real conversation this time on K6 UDA Radio. So I really don't make it any big secret that, uh, you know what, I am a big D-Star fan. I have been using D-Star for several years now. Last year, I got myself into DMR on a fairly limited basis, and I learned a lot about it. I very recently started playing with Fusion radios, and now I own two of them. So after playing with this stuff and doing my research for weeks, months, and years, I think I can give you some intelligent advice and we can really have a conversation about this stuff. We're gonna talk about the radios, we're gonna talk about digital radio at a, uh, at a 10,000 foot level because really when it all comes down to it, it's about making a connection from one ham to another. So the first thing that I want to dispel before we go any further is uh, the sound quality from all three of these. I have heard it all. When I was on D-Star only, I heard DMR guys saying, oh, DMR is the best. Uh, it's much better than D-Star. It sounds natural. When I, uh, when I first started learning about fusion, the Fusion guys were saying, oh, Fusion is absolutely the best. It uses uh, the new codec. It's, uh, it, everything is wonderful and great. Guys, that's BS. All of these three modes, they sound pretty much across the board the same. So don't let that be the issue that gets you from one to another. It just isn't so. I listen to them back to back, side by side, two modes going at a time. All right, let's talk about the radios. Uh, huge, huge difference in price and quality between these three different modes, between these three different types of radios. And let's dive into that first. Look, guys, if you wanna get into this for as cheap as you possibly can, you wanna try a DMR radio. You could pick these things up for between 89 bucks and 200 at the top end. All of them are gonna get you about the same thing. Most of them have a nice, big, bright display with uh, lots of information on it. The big drawback that I see with DMR radio is number one, all these things are built, they were built as commercial radios. They're still commercial radios. These are not built as ham radios. The main, the main purpose of them is really for enterprise uh, communications. These things are meant to be programmed by, uh, by the IT guy or the communications guy, handed out to a group of employees and told to go, you're gonna be on channel one, you're gonna be on channel two, you're gonna be on channel three. That's the way they're meant to, to work. Now, I know guys are saying, oh yeah, I can program the thing from the front panel, but you need to have a code plug put into that thing in order for it to work. And somebody has to build that initial code plug in order for it to work. And to get all the functions out of it, you have to program it with a code plug. So if you're using it around the house mainly and you're talking on your hotspot, really no big deal. You're gonna plug in the uh, you're gonna plug in the hotspot frequency, you're gonna plug in the uh, the talk groups that you want to use into your code plug, you're gonna write it off to the radio, you're gonna turn it on, and you're gonna use it just like that. The other thing that is a hindrance in the DMR world for me is the inability to take my radio somewhere on the fly. And when I say take it somewhere, I mean jump on an airplane or get in the car and go to a different city and get 
that thing up and running. Unless I can build a code plug beforehand or when I get there and download it into the radio, that radio is really worthless to me. Using this thing as a general radio on analog repeaters, they just don't cut it on analog repeaters at all. These things, the volume on there coming out on the other end is very low, very undermodulated. These things are optimized to use in the DMR setting, not the analog setting. So that is really a super secondary kind of a thing. And a lot of these radios don't have the ability to boost the uh, transmit signal or equalization within transmit under any mode. The D-Star radios. Now these come in several different flavors. You can pick them up uh, used from ICOM or from, you know, from other hams, the older ICOM stuff, and you can get into it fairly cheap. Uh, ICOM ID-51s and 5100s are plentiful. They're out there. You can probably pick them up new on sale for, you know, uh, 250 to $300 for the ID-5100s or the ID-51s. The ID-5100 is still a higher end radio with a lot of functionality built in. And then you could step up to like this, the Kenwood D74, my personal favorite radio of all time. This, my friends, is the Lamborghini of handheld radios. And here comes a helicopter. Squirrel. Now the big advantage to uh, say the D74 is its versatility. This thing is like all things to all men. This is a fantastic uh, analog radio. It is a wide band receiver, which means you can basically listen to Everything from A to Z. You can listen to HF, air, police, fire, talk on 2 meter, 220, 440 with this thing in analog mode. Most of the D-Star radios today also have built-in GPS and do APRS or a version of APRS, which is called DPRS. And guys, if you haven't tried APRS, especially if you're into off-roading or traveling on a motorcycle or something, uh, APRS is a fantastic way to, uh, to track your travels and keep your, uh, keep your family and friends informed of where you are, when you are. <clears throat> I'm just gonna talk over that. I'm just gonna talk over the helicopter. They are extremely easy to program from the front panel. Uh, with the built-in GPS, most of these now have the ability to go out and find a D-Star repeater based on your location. So literally, a, you know, a few months ago when I was uh, in Peoria, for the Superfest, I got off the airplane and literally within five minutes of getting off the airplane, I turned my D74 on. I said, go out and find me a D-Star repeater in the area. And it did. In five minutes, I was on the air talking, uh, talking to guys in Peoria and talking on, uh, on whatever reflector I wanted to be on. The display and the information you get on a D-Star radio, to me, second to none. I mean, without downloading uh, user bases or having to add anything to it, when you turn it on and you transmit, you're transmitting your call sign, your name, and whatever other little information bits you want to transmit, to the guy on the other end of the line. Now this Fusion Radio on the other hand, um, this is probably the simplest to operate, simplest to program radio that I have ever had in my possession. This thing is so easy, I didn't even need the instruction manual to get this thing up and running from the front panel. 
which means I can very easily take this radio to another city, get on the VFO, program in a frequency or a couple of frequencies, plug them into memory, switch back and forth and have no issues. And if I want to hook up to a Wires X node, well, that is like butter smooth. All you need to do here is uh, when you're running your Wires X mode, plug in a Wires X node frequency, tap the button on here. It goes right out, picks out that Wires X node. And you could go out and now download all the fusion rooms that uh, that are in there. That is about as butter smooth as it gets, my friends. Very, very easy to get on Wires X. Uh, very impressed with that. When you're thinking of one of these digital radios and you're thinking about the uh, the internet component or the uh, the talk group component of these radios. Think of an internet chat room. That's all those are, is an internet chat room uh, where different guys are hooking up different radios, plugging in to, a, uh, to an internet server, and all that traffic runs through that server and comes back out through either your individual hotspot or your local repeater. So there's literally hundreds or thousands of talk groups that any one of these can go to. Uh, and I'm gonna use the generic term of a talk group, but it still means the same thing. It still means a reflector, a room, or a talk group. Any one of these modes, there's one or two major talk groups that get most of the action. So by getting any one of these radios, you're not missing out on something from the other talk group. Now the DMR guys are gonna say, oh yeah, you've got 3100 and TAC 310 and it's, it's worldwide. Well, all of them are worldwide. All of them have national coverage uh, concentric to whatever country you're in, whatever state you're in. Uh, whatever local area you're in, all three of them are capable of getting talk groups that are within those types of interest levels. Fusion. Uh, there is America's Link. That's probably the biggest one, followed by America Rag Chew. And I'm talking about the U.S. right now because a lot of these other countries, I don't even understand the language, so I'm not listening to them. So if I've offended you, too bad. On D-Star, uh, Reflector 1 Charlie and Reflector 30 Charlie, those are the main two uh, reflectors or talk groups that dominate uh, the D-Star world. There's one or two major talk groups within each one of these uh, types of radios. Don't let that scare you because the conversation on all of them is pretty much the same. So if price is your major concern, this is probably the way you wanna go. I mean, I know there's a lot of guys that, uh, that don't have a lot of money to spare and that is the cheapest way to get into it is gonna be DMR. Now, both Fusion and D-Star, they're going to be a little bit more expensive, but the radios are super high quality radios that, you're going to, that are going to last you for years. Uh, there's not going to be crap that breaks inside of them all the time. They're going to take a beating. You're going to be able to take them with you wherever you want. Uh, you're going to get much more generally out of, say, a Yesu or a Kenwood or an ICOM radio than you will out of a TYT or a Bofang or, uh, or some other uh, cheaper radio. Now, there is an exception to every rule, and to every rule there is an exception. And the rule of uh, more expensive, better radio pretty much holds true, but Yesu 
Yesu went and did something with the FT70 here that I really, really like. This thing uh, is priced, priced right. At under $200 MSRP, uh, a lot more guys can afford this. And honestly, guys, I, uh, I just bought this one from MTC. It cost me $149 delivered. So which one is better for you? You know, honestly, I can't tell you which radio or which system is gonna be best for you. What I can tell you though, is if you have a lot of Fusion repeaters in your area, Fusion is probably the way you wanna go. If on the other hand, you have a majority of D-Star or DMR repeaters in your area, that might be the biggest consideration for you. If you mainly operate from your house and you're using a hotspot, pick your poison. Guys, I hope this video has been a little bit of a help to you in deciding whether or not to get into this whole digital thing or which way to go in this whole digital thing. Um, and if you liked the video, please give it the thumbs up and leave a comment below telling me what you liked, what you don't. Let's keep the conversation going here. Anyway, I'm uh, off to the next uh, off to the next video. I'm expecting an open spot two to arrive today. So uh, stay tuned for that video. Anyway, I'm Bob K6UDA and I'm out of here. Seven three.